Hello everyone, my name is Aspect, and welcome to back to another Applied Energistics 2 tutorial. Today we're going to be going over P2P tunnels, which is a really useful way to transfer things through an Applied Energistics 2 system and out to another side of it. Now I call these the stuff highway because they transfer things that normally don't need cables through a cable. And we'll go over how to do that and more in this video. So the first thing is how to craft these. And by default, you'll make the uh, basic ME P2P tunnel. And to make that, you need three Flux crystals, three iron ingots, and an engineering processor. Now the other tunnels you have to make by right-clicking them with a specific item. So firstly, the redstone. You can create by putting a redstone block, or I think redstone dust works too. The item one works with a hopper or any other item ducked from another mod. Uh, fluid, you can use the water bucket. Then we have the FE or forge energy, which is essentially the power. And then the light PDP tunnel, which is any light source. Now this memory card is an essential item to making P2P tunnels work. So to make that, you're gonna need gold ingots, two iron ingots, a calculation processor, and a redstone dust. And that'll get you this memory card. Now this memory card is used to actually assign a ID and link two P2P tunnels up. So let's go ahead and start assigning some. So the first one, the power, FE PDP tunnel can be used to send power between one block to another. So here I have a power storage block from thermal and I can go ahead and shift right click to place a PDP tunnel and you can see the back lights up which means it has power and go ahead and place the output on the other side. And so to assign an ID to these PDP tunnels I can go ahead and shift right click on the ground to clear the memory card. And then I can actually assign an ID to this by shift right clicking on the tunnel. And you can see the back changes to have some colors. So this ID specifically is yellow, purple, pink, green. And if I go ahead and normal right click on the output side, you can see it starts transferring power from one side to the other. Now one thing to note is you got you have to assign the ID on the input side first. So here's my system. I have a controller and I have power and I'm inputting from this infinite flux cell to the other one. So you have to shift right click on this one and only normal right click on this one or else it won't transfer through. So let's show that off with the fluid. I have a fluid cell here with a bunch of water in it and I can go ahead and assign my PDB tunnel make sure it's cleared and then create the ID, shift right clicking over here on the input side. So creating on the input side and going ahead to place a PDP tunnel on the output and normal right click to assign. And that starts moving that water through to the other side. This also works with a redstone PDP tunnel. You can see I have a lever on this side and it'll transfer a redstone signal between the two. So if I go ahead and create an ID and assign it to this lamp and then switch the lever, it turns the lamp on remotely. And the last one is the item P2P tunnel, which transfers items between two inventories. So I have a hopper here and I can go ahead and put the this item into it, assign my ID and then create another item P2P tunnel on this chest and put the ID in it from the other side and it transfers my item through the system. So that's how to use the four basic P2P tunnels, but what about the other two? This is the light P2P tunnel, which if I set it to nighttime, you can see I have a light P2P tunnel here with the red magenta and black ID, and same one on this side as the output. And if I go ahead and switch this lamp on, you can see it actually transfers light itself through the cable to the other side. You can use this for some sort of cool lighting setups. Now, one thing to note is the cable always has to have power for these uh, PDP tunnels to work. And on top of that, these PDP tunnels also use channels. So if you have more than eight PDP tunnels on the same line, so four inputs and four outputs, then it won't work because you don't have any channels and you'll need a controller. And the last PDP tunnel here is the ME PDP tunnel, 
which is arguably one of the most complicated. But what it does is it transfers channels through a smaller system. So here I have power on a line of cables and I have a bunch of storage over here, 32 to be exact. So a dense cable will be completely full powering all these up with channels. But I don't really wanna build dense cable all the way through here because well, it's expensive. And if it wasn't this example, this could be a lot farther away. So I have a home system here with uh, 41 million C pickles in it. And I can go ahead and put an ME P2P tunnel here and another ME P2P tunnel on the other side. Add power to both sides. So now you can see they light up. And then I have my input taking the channels out and into this system through the line and then outputting on this side. And the channels go ahead and come through. So the dense cable lights up fully. All of these power on, and you can see I can view those storage over here. So now I have 208 million seat pickles. And I guess I'll go ahead and take some of those for the road. And that is everything with P2P tunnels. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, let me know in the comments if you need anything else related to this or what kind of other tutorials you want to see. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.